Welcome back to the Pen and Inkwell. I've got something new today, but first of all, well, I've got a couple of new things. New hair. <laughs> Can't go unnoticed, I suppose. Just fancy to change, wanted to cut it off a bit and um, make a bit of statements with the colour. So it's autumn, so I went with a few autumn colours. It's also very close to bonfire night, so I went with the flames, really. But hey ho, different look. And then the glasses today, I do. I, I need to wear glasses. Um, I don't wear my glasses because I prefer to wear contacts, but I've been really suffering with allergies today and I just cannot get my contacts to go in very comfortably at all. So I'm afraid it has to be glasses for this one. And um, But getting used to them throughout the day, so hopefully it'll be all right. But back to pens, which is why we're here. I've got something new today. It's a manufacturer I didn't know an awful lot about. I'd seen them around, I'd seen them on um, online retailers. I hadn't read a lot about them, but they, what I had read was positive about them. It's another German manufacturer. So we're looking at Diplomat and they were pens that I never really sort of um, paid an awful lot of attention to, possibly because of the fact that I know they don't go down to extra fines, they only come, they're available in a fine, medium and broad and those of you that know me by now, my nib choice of preference is, you know, my nib choice of preference, what an awful sentence, my nib preference or my nib choice um, would be an extra fine nib. But I had an opportunity to try one out and I had to take it up. So I ordered a fine nib to have a look at what their fine nib was like, get a bit of comparison from that. And I did have some sort of feedback from my photographs on Instagram saying that even their fine nibs come out a little broader. But I'm gonna go into that in detail now. So what we're gonna be looking at is the Diplomat Aero. It's a different looking pen. In a way, it also has similarities to another pen that I'm not gonna sort of I'm not gonna mention but you'll you'll see that if you know you're familiar with the other pen. However, um, it's a nice looking. It's a nice looking pen, and it's a pen in a. It's a brown pen. I, I chose to have a look at a brown pen. Really wanted to have a look to see whether it was something that I liked or not. And I'll let you know my my thoughts of this now, sort of in detail, and have a look at the pen and the components of that and how that looks closer up just shortly after I finish speaking to you now. So, so this is the Diplomat Aero. It is a fine nib that I've got, and I'm gonna let you know how I feel. And I think you may be sort of um, surprised as my thoughts, really. So this is the Diplomat Aero. I'm going to turn the camera around and I'm going to be back with you in two minutes. Bye. Welcome back. So we're going to be looking at this Diplomat Aero now. So this is how this pen arrived to me. I will let you know from the off this packaging. For me, it's quite impressive. I, re I really do like this packaging. So it arrives in a box of this, which has Diplomat on it since 1922 and this sort of floral design around here. Again, Diplomats on there and then their German website and then the same on the bottom, quite plain on the bottom. So let's have a look and we'll get this opened up. So once we've got this open, put that aside, we then end up with this sort of tin-like sleeve. So it's silver across here. It's, it's this brushed silver actually across here. Again, the same design that's on the box, Diplomat since 1928, 22, sorry. And then it's black and it's because this is just a sleeve. And if I show you what I mean now on the bottom, so it just wraps around this black sort of cardboard then around there, or it's, you know, it's a Cardboard doesn't give it justice actually, it's far thicker than that, but it is card material. And then this then slides off. So it's, it's really well protected once it's in its box. And then again, Diplomat since 1922 in this little paper sleeve that we have here. Almost a sort of, um, sort of similar material to sort of blotting paper really, but quite it does feel quite luxurious. And this lifts up. Which then underneath here we have this padded section. 
with this with the emblem that's on there and this is where we find the pen underneath here so I'm just going to slide that out this lifts up underneath there we've got a warranty and then we've got two international cartridges so right from the off this pen takes international size cartridges as well as converters so I'm going to put the packaging away so we have a look at this a little closer so this is the Diplomat Arrow cigar shaped pen Let's see if I'm getting a little closer for you to have a look at there so cigar shaped pen and it has Diplomat printed around the bottom of the cap here made in Germany and then so this is the brown it also comes in white um, so it's brown through here and then it has these brushed silver or brushed chrome tip here which matches the top there and then you can see on the top there we we have that same emblem that same diplomat emblem at the top the clip the clip's very good actually really good spring action on that clip for you to see there and then I don't know whether this camera picks this up properly I think it does actually right the way around the whole barrel the bottom and the cap there's these grooves that have been taken out from it all the way around you hear my nail running down on there and that is matched with the cap as well it's almost like you know a little ice cream scoop or a little, some little sort of peel has come out and just taken these grooves out out of here right so this is one of the things I've noticed the only, one of the things that I find a little sort of frustrating actually about this pen um, is that the cap is really tight on here I thought it was a screw cap it isn't a screw cap it is just a click cap but it takes quite a bit of heft to take that off and if you can see from the for it actually takes quite a bit of force to clip that back together which has its has its advantages without any doubts as well because it means that it's a far more secure than one that just comes off very easily and it's, it, this cap is not going to come off in your bag or in a case or anything like that but you do I feel I do have to be careful because I'm afraid I'm going to take the bottom part off of it but before I take that off I'm going to give you a few measurements on this now so it is quite a heavy pen this is 42 grams in weight it is 20 with the cap on as you see it now it is 28 grams without the cap so still quite a heavy pen lengthwise quite a small pen actually it's 140 millimeters long it's 159 millimeters posted and it's 130 millimeters without the cap so let's have a look at this then sort of through here and take this back off so this is what we have so we have these grooved sections across here with that focus that's better it's focusing a bit better now so we have these grooved sections across here and as I said this brush metal at the bottom brush chrome and that is matched with this grip section here quite a long grip section as you'll see you know, it's pretty much almost a third of the pen is the grip section here and then the nib it's a nice big nib there we are and it has that same logo on there diplomat diplomat since 1922 and this is a fine nib it is a steel nib this pen which is the only thing that maybe this pen retails at 120 pounds here in the UK and at 120 pounds you are getting to that point where maybe a gold nib would have been nice but it it's a, you know it's a still nib and it's an attractive nib have a look around there and this is a fine nib so what I things I really like about this pen this grip section right for me it's a little long but that is just for me and that is just because of the length of my nails if I had shorter nails it wouldn't be an issue but because of the length of my nails I sort of find that my nail is touching the nib of this and because the nib is so long as well I sort of feel I have to hold it down here even though it's so long I can't grip it up here because it's too 
For me, it's too wide to grip at the top here. I have to grip it, I always tend to grip my pens close to the nib. And then I find that my nails can get in the way a little bit. Fairly short pen. It does post, but I wouldn't post it, I don't think. It doesn't post particularly securely. It does post. But I've seen pens that post better. But for me, it becomes quite top heavy. But then I don't tend to post my pens. I don't choose to post my pens if I if I don't need to. If they're pens that are designed to be posted, of course I post them, but otherwise I don't tend to. Because otherwise what I find with this pen post and it's wanting to lean into there, but I like my pens to sit in here and it doesn't sit comfortably in there. So I don't post it. But it's not, it is a short pen, but it's not too short and posted. So let's have a look at this sort of nib now. Um, I love it. I, I never thought I'd say it. Um, I actually like the fact that it's a broader nib. It is beautifully smooth. It's a really smooth steel nib. And for a fine nib, I wouldn't describe it as a fine nib. I would say it's probably a medium nib. Um, it's much broader than I would choose to use normally, but I've enjoyed writing with it. And those of you that are watching this now that may have been telling me for a little while, oh, you'll get to like broader nibs. I can start to understand why, because you really do start appreciating the inks that you're using. And the experience, you know, is, is different because it is smoother to write with and you're leaving a lot more ink on a page. Um, I posted a picture on Instagram using this pen recently and I, well, the pen still is filled with the same ink and, and it's with Rouge Hematite and, and it was lovely. It was a really nice experience. So just, if I just unscrew, so this unscrews off here. And the the converter came with the pen. The colour of that ink. I love that ink. It's one of my favourite inks, I have to say. This doesn't screw tight as much as I want to do. It doesn't take much look. You know, to loosen that up at all. Compared to the cap that is very tight, this probably can do with tightening up a little more. But other than that, the rib designs I really like. It gives it a different, it really gives it a different feel that I enjoy. The grip section for me is slightly too long, but again, that is purely because of the length of it. It's just a practical thing for me. The majority of people don't have nails that are you know, the length of mine. The clip is great, it doesn't post very well, but I don't choose to post my pens anyway. Um, international cartridges and comes with a converter, so you'll have plenty of choice of inks to use even if you wanted to stick to cartridges. But the nib, I really like the nib. So for me, overall, really good introduction to Diplomat for me. It isn't a company that I've looked at closely before, but I am. I have been very impressed with the nib on it. I think I might, I, well, not I think, I'd be tempted now to have a look at a different design that they may have, maybe something that's a little longer, a different sort of shape pen. Um, hopefully I can find something a little pretty as well. I do like the colour of this brown though. Um, I didn't want a white pen. I've, I've got white pens and I don't have a brown pen in my collection. So this is sort of does add something else. Um, but yes, I am impressed. I will be looking out for others and if you've got any other questions so I'm going to do now just before I go I'm going to do a quick writing sample so you see how it writes and how this fine nib writes on Roger paper and then again just leave me some comments but I'll be back with you two seconds while I just get my book out now so well, thank you for coming back so I'm going to do a quick writing sample now I've got a new notebook so this is now a roger dot pad rather than the roger square grid that i had before so this is the diplomat arrow it's a fine nib 
and the ink is Jeovin Rouge Hematite. It is, as you can see here, it's a beautifully smooth nib. I haven't had any hard starts with it, I haven't had any skipping with it. It's been very easy to use. Line variation, no, there, there isn't any there. There's beautiful shading with this ink, but that's this ink. As I say, this is one of my favourite inks. But other than that, it is, I would say it's broader than a fine nib. It's probably somewhere between a fine and a medium. I think I was probably being a little unfair earlier. It isn't as broad as a medium. It's probably between a fine and a medium. It's just different from some of the other pens that I've been using sort of recently. As I said, it retails at about £120 here in the UK. Um, do I think it's value for money? Um... Yes, I do. I think it's well made. The materials are, are nice in here. It is at the top end of what I think you would pay for a steel nib. I know that you know, there are Visconti pens out there for that this sort of price with steel nibs still. And you know, you would be starting to look at maybe gold nibs around this sort of price point, but the materials are strong. I think there's a lot of work gone into the packaging which I you know, I know it's Yes, I take them out and I don't keep them in their boxes. Then the boxes go somewhere else and are kept safely. However, it does always look nice when they sort of come very well, you know, very well, look, you know, packaged up and boxed up. It does sort of give that extra little bit when you're opening it. Any other comments? If I've missed anything, please just ask below and I'm more than happy to answer if there's anything else you want in these reviews that you want me to add to anything then please let me know if you want me to take anything out because they're getting too long again let me know i will now stop talking thank you very much for joining me again please subscribe to my channel leave any comments below and like my videos and i'll be back with you shortly with some more bye